Hello, my name is Chris Rex. I'm a professor of biology at Ivy Tech. I would just like to go over some further points after listening to the, the lecture you just did uh, over Shallow Wetlands Complex Thoughts by Dr. Bruce Kingsbury of IPFW. I'd just like to kind of relate this uh, whole topic of wetland conservation more to uh, what it means to you. Um, you know, we can sit here and talk about what wetlands do for plant diversity, for animal diversity, all these great and wonderful ecological and environmental things. But it, it, it's really hard to relate it to people in a way that makes them want to care. You know, why do you really care about species of plants and animals? Uh, how does that relate to your life? So I'd just like to kind of elaborate a little bit further along those lines. Starting with one of my favorite topics, venomous snakes. Uh, Bruce Kingsbury kind of mentioned throughout his lecture a few different times the Eastern Massasauga rattlesnake and how this animal is the only highly venomous snake up here in Indiana. Uh, it's very endangered. It's uh, a frequenter of swampland and kind of needs wetlands for its habitat. And that's why they're hurting so much in the state because they are part of that 95% of habitat that is lost which means we've lost 95% at least of all those snakes too. And that's really sad to think about. So why do we want to keep these snakes around? They're highly venomous, so obviously they're going to be dangerous if, we bite, if they bite us. So why do we care to keep them around? Well, a couple of different reasons. Uh, first off, they're actually a close cousin of this other snake called the pygmy rattlesnake. And the pygmy rattlesnake has had its venom developed into a drug called integralin, that can be used to treat people with low blood supply problems. So if somebody has uh, uh, their leg turning blue because it's not getting adequate blood supply down there, boom, we can give them this Integralin um, and it will help clear up that problem, help restore that blood flow. Same thing when it comes to like heart attacks where you have problems in the coronary arteries, they're blocking up, killing muscle tissue resulting in this heart attack. Boom, we can use this, this venom derived drug to save your life. So something that would normally hurt you, we have turned into something to help you. Actually, this has happened in a number of other cases, a number of other snake species. We actually have a dozen different drugs here in the U.S. right now that are saving lives that were all developed from snake venoms. So helping people with heart attacks, with strokes, uh, with uh, clotting disorders. These snake venoms are actually helping save lives right now in the United States. The other cool thing about a number of these snakes, uh, even though they are highly venomous, is that a number of them feed upon rodents in the wild. And what's cool about rodents is that they actually serve as an important first stage in the life cycle of a tick. So once a tick hatches from an egg, it has to get onto a mouse to kind of complete its first stage of its life cycle after which, then it can get on to larger animals, like deer, like humans, for instance. And so, by reducing the number of mice in the wild, we automatically reduce the number of ticks there in the wild. In fact, a single timber rattlesnake can reduce as many as 3,000 ticks per year, just by that one snake's action on feeding upon those rodents. So that's an incredible impact. And you think, oh, okay, well, fewer ticks to get on me, that's great. Makes my life a little bit more convenient when I'm walking around uh, hiking or whatever in the grass fields. But the real thing to consider here is that each deer tick or black-legged tick can carry Lyme disease, has the potential to carry Lyme disease. And Lyme disease is something that can cause a number of complications in humans and actually result in death in some cases. So if we reduce the amount of deer ticks in the environment, we automatically reduce the amount of Lyme disease in the environment. So we have less of this bacteria hanging around in these ticks that can spread to humans, which means healthier humans. That's great. Awesome. Same thing with the West Nile virus that Kingsbury mentioned. You know, we have less of this virus present in the environment because of changes to mosquito populations uh, in these healthy wetland ecosystems. You know, different species of mosquito are differentially abundant. Uh, doesn't, this virus doesn't tend to spread very well in certain species. So 
that's great, different species, less ability to spread, but we also, in these wetlands, there's, there's a healthy kind of ecosystem going on where a number of things are preying upon the mosquito larvae, such that you can actually have fewer mosquitoes overall in wetlands. And that's great, that further reduces your chance of getting this West Nile virus, having some sort of problems, health problems uh, resulting from that. So with this lower incidence rate of Lyme disease and of West Nile virus, that means that you basically spend less money on health care, you have a lower chance of dying, essentially, um, you get to spend less time off of work due to being sick. So really, overall, it just means more money in your pocket. You know, that's, that's awesome. And a longer, healthier life. The other thing that we can talk about is the frog sickle. All right, the, the wood frog that was kind of encased in uh, snow and ice there. Uh, you know, you take it in, you warm it up, and it's just fine. It survives the freezing process perfectly fine. So how can we relate that to humans? Well, we've been toying around with the idea for the past, I don't know, 100 years or so of being able to cryogenically freeze humans. We've not been making very good progress on that. Uh, so it's cases like this where we see an animal able to do this freezing action and survive without getting some sort of permanent brain uh, or tissue damage. We can learn from that. If we figure out how these wood frogs do it, we could perhaps apply that to humans and actually have a situation where we can freeze people with terminal illnesses. You know, if they only have a month to live, we can't cure them right now with our current medical knowledge and technology, just freeze them until we can get a cure for it. Or for long distance space travel. You know, if you want to have humans go off and colonize another planet, another solar system, another galaxy, you have to be able to cryogenically freeze them. It makes things a lot easier to just freeze them for the trip and wake them up, uh, thaw them out once they get to their destination. <clears throat> Aside from all these animals within the wetland, the wetland itself is a pretty magical place. It has a lot of different neat abilities, uh, such as improving the water quality, for instance. Uh, so the water that goes through a wetland ends up being kind of cleaned and filtered by all the different things in it, uh, whether it be plants or animals. And if we take one in particular, the cattail, it's a very nice showy plant, uh, tends to show up in some uh, ditch areas as well, but these cattails have an amazing ability to absorb toxins from the water, including things like arsenic, which is a primary component in rat poison. So if we take this idea and apply it to certain industry operations, uh, those that have to have some sort of runoff uh, into a stream, instead of putting together this fancy, expensive, artificial filter, uh, we can just plant a wetland and let the wetland filter the runoff. Saves us millions of dollars. Absolutely awesome how much advantage we can have by just using wetland instead of all this fancy stuff. Another thing that's great about wetlands is that it's flood protection, excellent flood protection, to where we can have up to six inches of water, maybe, uh, being absorbed by normal grass-covered dirt, but wetland can absorb up to three feet of water. So if you have an acre of wetland, you can absorb one million gallons of water in that one acre. That is an incredible amount of water that can be stored, you know, after a rainstorm. That would normally just flood an entire area, uh, damage homes and property. No, we can just have a wetland there and it can serve as a great buffer for all this runoff. So it's, it's incredible when we start thinking about all these different advantages to wetlands because, yeah, it's great for flood protection. Yeah, it's great for all these other animals they can have. But we can also relate that to our food industries, to our recreation industries. You know, it's great for hunting and fishing, um, uh, serving as a great place for mammals and birds. You know, all this stuff. Wetlands are a vital component of the environment, yield several economic and health benefits to people as well as the animals and plants that occupy them. Thank you for listening and have a great day.